Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather, and I want to first start where it's snowing right now. It's been snowing good, Pacific Northwest, BC, Banff. This is the, uh, the webcam suite up there at Banff Sunshine, where it's cold and it's snowing. It's in the 20s, teens and 20s, and you can see the cameras. Between now and probably the 4th, I've got another 8 to 12 inches on the way, and even some snow beyond that as well with the next wave. But you can see the cameras up there in some places. It is socked in. I just want to show you the setup right now. This will take us into the uh, the forecast that I want to get to. But um, let me just mark the big features. Big low right here. Uh, another low right here. And there's even another third low here. And that's one of the bottom lines of this part of my headlines. Three low pressures now for early November between the 1st and the 10th. So a three-storm combo. Let me draw in the... Um, the storm track, so it's running something like this, and there's your dip, there's your trough developing, which is going to be heading down into California. It's going to be moving down in this direction, and then that low will take a southern track. So the first low, which is right here, will take more of a southern track. Second low, which is right here, will go more kind of central to north, and the third low looks to follow the almost exact same track of the second one. So now we're dealing with a very active pattern. And I do like what I see from the second and third low as far as big total potential and strong aura graphics. So that's part of the forecast we're going to get into. I wrote about it on my blog this morning, chrystomer.com. Please subscribe if you haven't. You'll automatically get updated in your email box whenever there's an updated blog post, which is almost every day now, especially now that ski season's here. Um, so I went through the bullet points, the first, second, and third storms. I outlined them on the satellite, which we just did as well. And then here I decided to go with a slideshow of the jet stream flow between today and the 6th. So take a look at that. I've got it loaded high res into my show, so I'm going to switch over to that right now. So this is the third of November. Jet stream, this is this is really in line with what I've been talking about for the last probably four days. Not the right wind flow or jet pattern for big snow in the Sierra. You may get a foot out of this first storm, but it could have been so much bigger with the right wind flow. So the storm is top positive tilt in the trough. It's going to move fast and take a southern track and affect the southern tier of the Rockies. So again, that is the third. Look at the fourth. It moves into New Mexico at this point. Strong winds, obviously, over the high peaks with a jet stream uh, pattern like this, but the low is is pinched. It almost wants to cut off. There will be some good totals in southern Colorado. Now, I want to point out something important here for northern New Mexico, Taos, Angel Fire. Um, here's the situation. The low look, a couple of days ago looked like it was going to take more of a southern track almost in Mexico almost in Mexico. Now the track has come a little further north, which means the orographics is going to be a little bit better for Taos and northern New Mexico, Angel Fire. Um, all of those areas should get a little bit more snow. And you'll notice in my forecast, I up some of the amounts for those, for those locations. All right, here is the 5th, Saturday the 5th. First storm's gone. We already can see the second storm in the Pacific Northwest with the jet streak and the powerful winds moving in up there. What you see here on the 4th, 3rd, 4th, 5th is technically going to be a brief atmospheric river for the Pacific Northwest. Um, so a fire hose of moisture gets thrown into the Cascades and the high volcanoes, and some of that will get overrun, will overrun the interior of the, the Rockies in Idaho, western Montana, Wyoming, northern Utah, and potentially, if it sinks far enough south, parts of the Sierra in California. So that's a great looking pattern there on the 5th. Here's the 6th right here. And it's just a big trough developing with strong wind. So at this point, um, and that's more of a west, west to east type of pattern, um, that can still mean good snow. Um, so that's all in my forecast and I do cover that on my blog if you want to take a look at that. Um, it's on there in a slideshow. Um, so next would be time. Well, here's the brief atmospheric river before we get to timing. And I talk a, a little bit about the uh, IVT, or as we call it, integrated water vapor transport. You can see it here. Um, it is significant, but it's brief. And you can see how the winds are pointed. The transport winds are pointed directly into the Pacific Northwest. So there's some alignment right there. And it's also indicated in the model runs as well. Could be a moderate, maybe low-level strong type of brief brief atmospheric river three four and five 
in the Pacific Northwest. So that's all on the blog. Let's talk about timing. Um, so I'm going to run this out. Here is Wednesday morning at 6. Here comes the first storm diving south through California into Arizona and in New Mexico. There's 6.30 a.m. Friday. There's Saturday. Here comes low number 2. Diving south with the jet. More snow for the Sierra. And here is Sunday night at 8.45. And the third low um, is way up into uh, B.C. and Alaska at this point, but already sending some spokes of energy south into the Pacific Northwest. It's just a powerful flow. Here it is one more time. Wednesday at 6, here's Thursday at 6 a.m., here's Friday at 6 a.m., here's Saturday at 6 a.m., roughly 6.45, and there is Sunday at 6 a.m., and there's Sunday night. So this is an incredibly active pattern with three different low pressures lined up in this atmospheric flow that we have right now. All right, so let me go into totals here, and we'll do it in two different phases. All right, so this will run us all of today through the 4th, um, about a foot, 6 to 12, in the Sierra out of this first low. In Utah, Brian Head, probably 16, 17 inches, about a foot. Now, some of what you see moving into northern Utah may actually be coming from the next low pressure late in the period, but nonetheless, within that 11-1 to 11-4 period, probably a foot in the, uh, the Wasatch. In Colorado, I really like the Southern Mountains. I like the San Juans for about a foot down there. Wolf Creek, depending on exactly where the axis is for this low, um, we may have to bump up those numbers. It just depends on what the exact wind direction is going to be. And I upped my numbers for Taos, Ski Santa Fe, and Angel Fire, as you can see, 8 to 10 inches. I, I like, and I mentioned this at the top of this, this presentation, 8 to 12 probably on the way for Banff, Sunshine, Marmot, Revelstoke, Kicking Horse, Red Mountain, and Fernie, maybe more in Fernie through this period. And then we're going to have to watch to see Storm 2 and 3 come in, and that is the second piece of my, my, for, my forecast here. And look at these numbers, folks. If this orientation with the jet actually occurs and verifies, we're going to see some big numbers. Um, and so I upped a number of these and even shifted the axis just a little bit south into the, into the Sierra. Um, so I really like northern Utah. I like Wyoming. I like Montana, Idaho, Oregon, um, and parts of the Sierra. If we can truly get those jet-level winds to line up in this sort of pattern, we're going to get some big numbers out of this with three different storms lined up through the period and a really good second period right here. All right, so that's going to do it for this update, guys. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Thanks, and take care.